This is Pad Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online on our regular Saturday services, and we're reading Luke chapter 2. I want you to understand why this is important and how it applies to our life. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Mm. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop there for a minute because, you know, we got to in interject Pat's two cents. All right. Now, when you look at that, we have no idea how the enemy taxes our life. I know it sounds crazy to use it in that context, but there's a certain amount of taxing and weighing down and oppressing. That is a form of, of oppression. And there's that oppression that takes place in everybody's life. If you live on the face of this planet, you cannot escape having to go through that. That's part of the process of us being here. Now, it can work to our good or it can work to our de detriment, depending on whose side we're living on. Okay, as for me and my house, I choose to serve the Lord. So whatever happens is going to happen for my good, just like you who are listening to me, who are on God's side. Now, listen to this. I want you to listen to the details of this event. Here we are. Jesus is about, nobody knows everything's normal, just like it is now. Nobody knows what's going on. Jesus is on the scene, baby. He's right here in this planet. And we don't know it. Nobody knows. Everybody's going about their daily business. And the powers that be on this earth, the greedy powers that be, are finding more ways to suck the people dry. So that's not good news that everybody has to go and be taxed. That's another amount of pressure put on us, right? So of all times to have to go through this pressure, what ends up happening? Mary is full with baby. She is full term. She is ready to pop that baby boy any second. But what happens now? Of all the times during her pregnancy, Right when she's about to deliver, she's got to ride on a donkey for miles to be taxed. Some nonsense the government put out there, now she's got to go do that crap. You know, when a woman is full with child, she doesn't want to be sitting on a donkey. Bad enough having to drive a long ride in a car for four or five hours. You pregnant women know what I'm talking about. I don't, but you do. So, because I've never been there, but I know from having pregnant friends, it's not a joy ride. Imagine being on the back of a donkey. Imagine you husbands having to trek your wife through the countryside to get miles and in, in a days of journey, sleeping out in the night, no bed, no comfort. You got to get all the way out to this place and you're on the back of a donkey, that's not, you know, with good suspension and 
air conditioning and heat and all the comforts of home. No, that's out exposed to the elements of the night, the cold, the winter, full with baby. All right. Can you imagine how uncomfortable that is? Now, this woman is about to bring forth the Messiah. Now, I'm saying this for those of you who have to go through and have to get things the hard way. Some miracles must come through pain. Some miracles must come through strain. Do not complain. Do not murmur. Understand that before things are brought forth, the labor pains come first. Labor pains, that includes the word pain. So when things start to hurt in your life, don't roll your eyes and suck your teeth at God. Understand there's a blessing getting ready to break forth. See it that way and you won't be so easily discouraged. You won't be so easily disillusioned. It won't be so easy for you to quit, turn your back on God and give him the finger, so to speak. Mm. So here they all go out to be taxed to his own city. Now, here he's got to travel all these miles to get his wife to where they can be uh, taxed. Now, while this is all going on, all right, the day is accomplished that she should be delivered. Verse six, and she brought forth her first son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. How many of you men or women would be willing to lay a newborn baby in a feeding trough, in a, a wooden box or a wooden containment that horses and cattle feed out of. Animals are licking and feeding and slopping all over that thing. And you got to lay a baby in that? That's not too sanitary, is it? So when you look at how the Messiah came into the world, he did not come under ideal laboratory conditions. So for those of you waiting on your blessings from God, trust me, they will not always come through ideal laboratory conditions. So don't you roll your eyes at God because you got to come the hard way. Jesus is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Why? He came the hard way. He didn't come easy. They didn't have room for him. Many of you go through your life, people don't have room for you. You're not at the top of their list. You're not at the top of their list of priorities. You're not a main concern to them. A lot of people have total disregard for you. Some of them don't even want to be around you because you're too Christianly. You're too, uh, you, 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 you're just too extreme. You're just a little out there. You're too over the top with this Jesus thing. So people would rather not be bothered. And when they have gatherings and they have things, who do they not invite? Count it all joy. <laughs> Moving right along. So she brought forth, verse 7, her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a feeding trough in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You find out there's no room for Jesus in a whole lot of this world. In society, there's room for Buddha, there's room for Muhammad, there's room for all these guys, but there's no room for Jesus. You can say God on TV tentatively, don't overdo it, 
but don't you dare say the name Jesus. There is still no room for him right here. Still no room for him. That's sad. And he's the one, the one and only that can get you through your pain, out of your pain and heal you from it. He's the only one who can deliver you from your drug addictions. He's the only one who can deliver you from your roots of bitterness. He's the only one who can deliver you from your hangups and your idiosyncrasies and your bondages and your bruises. He's the only one that can deliver you from fear, intimidation, self-hatred. Oh, he's the only one, but he's the only one who does it. The world has no room for. Isn't that a little strange to you? Verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now, let me put it this way. This is what I love about God. He did not go to the Pentagon. Think about it. He didn't get on the internet. Yeah. yeah, you get me. He didn't put it in the news on the front page. Hurry, hurry, step right up, everybody. The Messiah has shown up on the scene. No, 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 no. They didn't do that. God sent his angels to the back door, to the basement of society. As his word says, I will use the base things of this world to confound the wise. He didn't go to the wise. He didn't go to the powers that be. He didn't go to the heads of state, to the king, to royalty, to the president. He didn't go to the White House. He didn't go to the castle. He didn't go to the, to the, the governors and the senate. He didn't go to Congress. He didn't go to any of that, did he? No. He didn't go to Channel 2 News, to NBC News, to CBS. He didn't go to any of that. No. He went to the back door to the nobodies of society. See, that's the way God operates. When you think you don't count in the scheme of things and people don't have room for you and people have total disregard for you, remember, you're number one on God's list. You're number one, baby. The last shall be first. The first shall be last. That's God's math. All right. Before you get the feeling like a nobody, thinking you don't count in this life. Oh, yes, you do. You may not count in people's books, but baby cakes, God is looking and booking at you. You're very important. He's mindful of you. He has not forgotten your labor of love. So here they are watching, keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse 9, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. I love emphasizing that. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, to all people, excluding none, all people. Hmm. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and he shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a feeding trough. I keep saying feeding trough because lying in a manger sounds so poetic and so pretty, but a feeding trough probably stinks. See, when you lay on hay and you're laying, remember Mary didn't have a bed. Mary didn't have heat. She didn't have the comforts of home, a toilet to go to. She didn't have any of that. Imagine how she had to take care of her personal needs, how Joseph had to take care of his personal needs. Imagine what that was like. No hotel room, no bed. But wait a minute, something wrong with this picture. This is the mother and the stepfather of the Messiah. Whoa, 
God the Son. And that's the best you can come up with? Okay, let's put it in nowadays. Let's put it in today's. Okay. So I'm going to put it in today's terms. All right. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Because I want you to picture it in reality. Get, help me, Lord, with this. Help me. For those of you who feel like you came up the hard way, you came up on the wrong side of the tracks, you came up hard. It was, it was, it seemed like everything was working against you. If anybody had anything, you were the last to get it and you were the first to lose it. Listen to this. Mm, mm, mm. See, you have a living savior who understands what you're going through what you've been through, and he knows how to get you through it, out of it, and raise you up in high places of life. All right. <clears throat> and the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, red, yellow, black, and white, to dope addicts, to prostitutes, which will be to all people, the drunkards, which will be to all people, the homeless, which will be to all people, hello, the insane, the prisoners, the inmates, which will be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. He shall find the babe wrapped in some rags over there at the corner of, of, of Fifth and Main. Mm, mm, mm. Lying in a garage. They're lying in the toolbox in a garage. Think about it now. Think about this. <laughs> On a bale of hay. And suddenly, there was with an angel multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, lying in a feeding trough, lying in a toolbox. Mm. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Wow. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Amen. 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 Listen, you don't realize how some of the blessings of God it really comes the hard way, unfortunately. Some things do not come easy. Sometimes the biggest miracles come through the biggest strains. I watched a movie about a year ago, comes to mind, and it's titled From Homeless to Harvard. But she carried herself and took herself through Harvard. She went the hard way. You saw the movie with Will Smith playing a role with his son, playing a, a, a homeless father, trying to get this job where he could really make a good living. And one night they had to spend in a public toilet, sleeping on the floor. Came hard, but it came. Don't be weary and well-doing, you guys. When things come hard, it doesn't mean denial. It doesn't mean that you are not the one. But when you get it, you're going to be so equipped. You're going to be so ready, so full of power, so effective, so prosperous in your endeavors. Mm. Like the butterfly, you cannot cut a cocoon open 
and let the butterfly loose. You have signed his death warrant when you do that. The butterfly has to go through the process of the struggle in order to pump up and build up everything he needs in his wings, the strength and the fluids and all of that to have the strength and endurance to fly, to leave the ground, or he will die on the ground. He'll die there if you let him go. So I want you to realize God knows what he's doing. He knows how to get you there. He knows how to fulfill Every promise, every plan, every ordained divine assignment in your life, he knows how to make it come to pass. If he can't, if you can't, not he, he can do all things, but if you can't find a way to get to it, and maybe you've missed his signals and his road signs and you made some wrong turns trying to get there, God will get it to you. God will make it happen. You just have to put your foot in front of the other and make an effort. Hmm. All right. Let's go on to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. I know they were tired. When they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they would come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draft of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John and the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Mm. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Now, this is what I want to share with you. You wonder, what does that have to do with the scheme of things? Many of you have a call on your life. You know that. Many of you have a call. And God is working things in and working things out. We get that. But what you have to look at is... There are times when God comes to you at the most inopportune moment. Now, you have seen how some things come through pain in order to get to the gain. You've seen how, how Mary had to suffer and she was bringing in the Messiah and she had to go through all of this inconvenience and discomfort. Hmm. Lack of comfort, totally. Now, Imagine, here you are, you've toiled all day, you're tired, you're, you're tired, your life is wearing you down, you're, you're busy with the things of life, and you're pooped, too pooped to pop, and now God comes to you with a calling on your life, and sometimes we feel like if I have to do another thing, if I have to put one more thing on my plate, I'm leaving the table. I'm done. Sometimes God says, no, you don't have to do it all. Get rid of all that other stuff and do what I call you to do. And you won't be so tired. 
You won't be tired at all because I'll give you a refreshing. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Ha! So now when Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, but my yoke is my my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He doesn't put burdens on you like man does. Man oppresses you. He'll tax you. He'll tax you down. He'll wear you out. But God, no, no. His blessings add no sorrow. So when you go God's way, you can be reassured that you will be constantly refurbished, constantly renewed, constantly refreshed constantly restored because God rewards obedience. God rewards faithfulness and service to him. So don't think of all you have to give up and all you have to sacrifice and all that you're doing without. All the fun and the comforts of home that you don't seem to, to have it at your disposal. There are rewards coming, baby. And you don't have to wait till you get to the sweet by and by to get it. God will reward you here in the land of the living. He will protect you. He will keep the diseases of Egypt away from you. None of these things will come near your dwelling. He will keep all evil from you. You have a risen savior. So when you start to look around and get caught up in the anxieties of life, remember who your Lord and Savior is. Remember how he does the impossible, all that he's able to do in your life. Don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Your redemption draweth nigh. Look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. This is not the time to stop. This is not the time to pull the key out of the ignition and get out the car. You're right around the corner from your blessing. You're right around the corner from seeing your miracle begin to unfold before your eyes. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Trust him through your trials. Trust him through your times of lack. Trust him through your struggles. Trust him through your disappointments. Trust him when things get hard and the doors get slammed in your face and all you get is no, 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 no thank you. Trust him because with every door that's closed and every roadblock that's put in your way and every detour you have to turn, it's getting you there. He's channeling you right where you need to go. He'll get you there, baby, no matter what Satan throws in your way. God will get you there as long as you keep applying the gas and you keep moving forward, yes. He will do what he has started in your life. He will complete, he will accomplish, and you will see the fulfillment. You will see the fruit of your labors, the fruit of your struggles. He that sows in tears reaps in joy. Listen. When you go through life, what does the Bible say? I want to quote that scripture. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Mm. He bottles up every tear of yours. Know that God will get you there. Stay encouraged. I'm going to stop before this internet starts acting up on me again. God bless you and enjoy the Christmas season and think of all that it means, not just the story. Think of all that it infers in your life. God bless you and Merry Christmas.
Okay, I think because we're in the end days, I think that what's going to be happening really soon is that there's going to be a lot of fear out there, mm -hmm. major fear. Mm -hmm. And I think what we have to remember as being Christians is to praise the Lord, yes. worship him, mm -hmm. uh, put hedges of protection around us, yes. loosen angels to help us, and speak what we want to be done because yes. this is our, our, our artillery. Mm -hmm. We can speak into existence what we need in these times that are going to be bad. And if mm -hmm. we sit there and just sit there and coward in, in fear, the enemy has won. Right. So do not let the enemy win. Right. Know that the Lord is with you. Mm -hmm. uh, even though you might think he's left, he's going to be really, really busy with lots of stuff happening. So if you feel he's not there, don't. Know he's with you and know that your mouth is your weapon. Yes. We are going to be the light of the world. Mm -hmm. We are going to be the people who are the fishermen of soul. Right. We are the people who are going to be rebuking things for other people. Right. Uh, we, are, we are going to be giving favor mm -hmm. to people so that they can find the Lord. Mm-hmm. Those are the main things. Just remember, don't be afraid. Do not fear. Mm -hmm. Know that that we are the ones that are going to be helping others. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you for sharing that. Very well said, Lynn. Yes. Yes. Because it, I agree with you, Lynn, and I believe, like you said, Pat, but we have to trust God and be still because... Anything worth having is, is, is going to take work. And yes. the most prized blessing is being filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. salvation, the blessings that, you know, that God bestows up, upon us. Yes. You know, and and as you said, Lynn, in these last days, mm -hmm. he's raising up people to stand. And, mm -hmm. and it's going to be so, so literal. You know, you're going to see the manifestation. You're going to see prayers. You're going to be praying and, and but but he's preparing and we have to trust in God and allow God to lead us and know that he loves us and trust in him and not what we see or not what we feel not how we feel even sometimes when we can't trace him but trust him because while he's we're here he's working he's moving in us he's protecting us he's right. showing us he's teaching and and, and don't doing work in us, but we have to trust and know mm -hmm. in spite of you know our failures and our mistakes that he's taken all of this to refine us so mm -hmm. that we can stand and, and be yes. those women of light and men of light in these last days in this dark and evil world and it's true, but you have to know that um, trust in him and, and know that and value God and value his word and value these things and, and know that okay you know, I might stand by myself and, and I might feel lonely and I may cry. Right. But I got my God. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm going to be rejected. But I, and the Lord went through these things. Mm -hmm. He went through betrayal from Judas and he was a perfect man, did nothing but show love. And, That's right. And they said Christ did so much that there's not enough box to contain what he did. So we only know an inkling of, you know, this Bible and, you know, what we read. So, but my point is that he, we suffer these afflictions and these different things, tests and trials. Mm -hmm. But the whole time, God is saying, "Be still and trust in me." Right. Be still and not look at what how it feels and what the, your mom did or how she disappoints you. Right. But trust and I have you. So, yes, it was very good. Amen. Thank you, Marlene. Thank you for sharing that. 